Good evening, good evening. It is 7.30 according to that old clock on the wall. I mean 7 o'clock according to that clock on the wall. It is 7 o'clock, which means it's time for what? Sharp points. That's right. Iron sharpeneth iron. So that the man sharpen the countenance of his friends. So we're here tonight to sharpen you, to cause you to develop and be everything that God wants you to be in the kingdom of God. So let us not waste any moment of tonight. Let's make these precious, precious moments count. Get on the phone, text somebody, call somebody, make them aware that Sharp Points is here on Facebook Live or YouTube or wherever you may be watching this particular program. Make them aware of it. They won't be able to know on their own. You have the ability to share, to hit that like button, to hit that subscribe button, and to connect with those that you genuinely care about. I believe that the knowledge, the understanding, and the wisdom that you have, you should want to impart that to others or cause others to live life on your level. So get on that phone, text somebody, call somebody, email them, do whatever is necessary to bring them on to this particular program and cause them to watch what you're watching, hear what you're hearing, and grow together with you. All right. We're going to have a word of prayer without any delay tonight. We're going to dive right back into this teaching tonight. Again, we're here every Thursday night right now. Amen. At seven o'clock. Amen. We're on Facebook Live every Tuesday night at 730 and every Sunday morning currently at 1015. We want you to watch. We want you to grow. We want you to learn. We want you to digest this information, <laughs> apply this information and receive the results that this information can bring to your life. Let's pray. Father, tonight we welcome your presence. We welcome your voice. We welcome your anointing for we know it is the anointing that destroys the yoke. Thank you so much tonight that you will think through my mind, speak through my lips, a relevant word that will help your people. Thank you for giving those that are watching tonight the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation that they might see things and hear things that only you can make them see and hear. We glorify you for it in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Well, on behalf of my lovely wife, Risa and I, and Newness of Life Christian Center family, we're so glad you're watching tonight. Again, take your time, hit that like button, hit that share button, hit that subscribe button, hit those buttons that will cause others to glean in and pull in the information that you're about to receive tonight. We're dealing with part two of a teaching that we started that we believe will be helpful and last week, we, uh, this particular message only has two little points. And last week, we got to one of those points. And hopefully tonight, we'll be able to get to the other one. We're talking about the manna ceased. We're talking about ideas, skills, and strategies. We're talking about what? The manna ceased. We're talking about ideas. We're talking about skills and strategies. <clears throat> All right, Joshua chapter 5 Verses 9 through 12, and the Bible reads as follows. And the Lord said unto Joshua, we know Moses is dead. Joshua now is the leader. He's the one who has brought the people of God into the promised land. The law, Moses brought them out of Egypt, but grace and truth, Jesus Christ, takes us into the precious promises that have been made to us by our heavenly father. The Bible said, the Lord said unto Joshua, this day have I rolled away the reproach of Egypt from off you. Wherefore, the name of the place is called Gilgal unto this day. We know Gilgal means a rolling away. It also means wheel. So we understand that God had rolled away the reproach of Egypt. And the children of Israel encamped in Gilgal and kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month at even in the plains of Jericho. And they did eat of the old corn of the land on the morrow after the Passover 
unleavened cakes and parched corn in the self same day. Verse 12. And the manna ceased on the morrow after they had eaten of the old corn of the land. Neither had the children of Israel manna anymore, but they did eat of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. Now we are saying to you that the manna ceased. The manna fell from heaven while they were in the wilderness. It wasn't the way they were going to live the rest of their days. The manna fell from the sky. Manna means what is it? Amen. Manna fell from the sky while they were going through the wilderness. Once they got into the promised land, which was what God's original intent of bringing them out was, it wasn't to get them into the wilderness and make them live in the wilderness the rest of their lives. It was to bring them out of Egypt, take them through the wilderness into the promised land. Now, God, according to the scriptures, could have taken them away from the wilderness, but it would have brought them towards a fight. And the people that Moses had with him at that moment weren't warriors. They were farmers. They were used to uh, being slaves. So God did not take them the quickest route. He took them through the wilderness to avoid warfare. And so he brought them to the wilderness and they went through the wilderness and manna fell from the sky because why? They were out in the desert. They was in a desert place. And in a desert, guess what? You can't sow seed. You can't reap a harvest. The desert is a dry place. You know what happened in the desert that they allow uh, Moses to speak to the rock and water gushed out of the rock. Manna fell from the sky. So when they got into the land of promise, Canaan land, the manna stopped. They were no longer to depend on manna. They were to now depend on these principles that we're talking about. That's why we're talking about ideas, skills, and strategies. In other words, God is a God who grants us miracles. He wants us to understand that he's a God of miracles. When, amen, you need a miracle, we can call on God and God will come through. But eventually he wants us to learn how to live by ideas, by through skills and through strategies, because we got to live our lives every day and be fruitful and productive men and women of God. So we need ideas, we need skill, and we need strategies. Listen at it in the easy translation. The Bible said the next day, I'm reading Joshua 5, verses 11 and 12 in the easy translation. E-A-S-Y translation. It says, the next day they ate food that had grown in Canaan for the first time. They ate flat bread and grain that they had cooked on a fire. The manna that they had been eating no longer appeared. The Israelite people never ate manna again. Now they could eat the food that was grown in Canaan. You see, they never ate manna again. They were to eat the food that had grown in Canaan. In other words, they would eat the fruit of their ideas, of their skill, and of their strategies. That's how God wants us to live, to live by ideas, by skill, and by strategies, to live by hearing the word of God and then extracting from the word of God principles for us to live by. Let, let me move further into this. Now, this is very, very important because a lot of times many Christians, they practice bad stewardship because they're trying to live through and buy miracles. They get paid on Friday, mess their money up, spend it foolishly, broke by Saturday evening, 
and then want you to bail them out. Why? Because they're trying to live by miracle. They want you to help them out. They're not living by ideas, skills, and strategies. God wants us to live by ideas, skill, and strategies. Notice again, I'm reminding you, God is a God of miracles. He allowed mighty signs and wonders to be wrought to bring them out of Egypt. So what I'm saying, when you're in sin, when you're in darkness, God has to use the miraculous power to bring us out of the stronghold of Satan. God brought them out with signs and wonders, allow frauds to be in the Egyptian camp, none to be in the Israelites camp, lice to be in the Israelite, I mean, in the Egyptians camp, none to be in the Israelites camp. God turned the water into blood in the Egyptian camp. The water in the Israelites camp was okay. God allowed many signs and wonders to take place so that Pharaoh will let his people go. And of course, we know the last thing that God done is that God allowed the firstborn of the Egyptians to be killed. But in the Israelites camp, the firstborn was kept safe because of the blood being applied on their doorposts. And we recognize that symbolizes the blood of Jesus Christ and we're covered by the blood. But God brought them out with his mighty hand and then threw him by. No water being out there in the wilderness, no food being out there in the wilderness. God had to give them supernatural miracles. In fact, the Bible says that their clothes did not wear out. Their clothes did not wax small. In other words, as they grew physically, their clothes grew with them. As they grew physically, their shoes grew with them. What was that? That was a supernatural Thing. That was a miraculous thing. Amen. Well, think about it in your life and mine. Does that happen now? No. Why? Because there are shoe stores. There are stores that have sneakers. There are stores where you can buy shoes and clothes for your body. So as I grow and as you grew when you were coming up, none of us had our clothes to grow with us. None of us had our what? Shoes to grow with us. What, how do we make it? We had to make it through our mother's and father's ideas, skills, and strategies that the budget their money so that when your shoes wore out, they had the money to buy you a new pair. Why? Because God wasn't letting your shoes grow with you. God was not keeping your shoes, amen, for all those many years. You see, and he's not doing that today. Why? Because they're shoe stores. Why? Because there's grocery stores. Why? There's no need for the manna to keep falling from the sky when we're no longer out in the wilderness. Shout out to Melinda Burt, Trina Williams, uh, Minister Danny and Thelma Wiggins. Glad to know you're watching tonight. Don't forget, connect with this because this is very, very important if we're going to lead a prosperous life. Shout out to Vincent Bellamy and your lovely wife, evangelist Jackie Bellamy. Listen, it's been said that there is nothing more powerful than an idea whose time has come. See, God wants you to be a thinker. God wants you to use your mind. God wants to renew your mind through and by the word of God so that you can be transformed into this butterfly rather than staying a caterpillar. So our thinking is very, very important. That's why I challenge saints all the time to read some good books. And of course, we got 13 of them to feed your mind, because as you read good books, it's going to give to you ideas, skills and strategies. Listen. We have to grow and develop and help people grow and develop when the manna ceases. See, if you believe that God was going to supply your needs every day through a miracle, you wouldn't go to work. If you believe that God was going to supply your needs through a miracle, you wouldn't have a savings account or a checking account. 
Why? Because, hey, God can give you a mirror. But if you understand that that's not the way that you're going to do life, that you have to understand that the reason why Jesus, who illustrates the manna that fell from heaven, he said, your fathers did eat manna, which fell from heaven and they're dead. And Jesus said, I am the bread of life. So we eat of him every day. We eat of him. He is the word of God, the Logos made flesh, and we eat of him every day. Now, when Jesus was preaching and teaching the word, the Bible said the people followed him for three days and they were out in a what? Desert. Guess what Jesus had to do? He had to grant them a miracle. Because why? There was no food out there in the desert. So therefore, he asked them to give him what they had. They had two fish, a few loaves of bread. Jesus multiplied them and they did all eat and were filled. And he took up 12 baskets full. Why? They were out in a desert. They were not near a marketplace. In fact, the disciples said, Lord, only two fish and a few loaves of bread. What is that among so many? Send them back to what? The marketplace. What's at the marketplace? Food. What at the marketplace? Something for them to eat. But they didn't know that Jesus knew that these people had made a great sacrifice in following him for three days out into a wilderness. And they weren't murmuring and they weren't complaining. They were feasting on the word. So he, he granted them a miracle. Well, if they were near a marketplace, would Jesus have to do that? No. They would have ideas, skills, and strategies, and they would have money to buy the food that they needed. That's what we're trying to teach you, that we want you to live your life knowing that the manna is going to cease. When a person first gets saved, you notice what happened to that person. They see a lot of miraculous stuff. Amen. But then after a while, they got to learn how to live by faith. Living by faith is living how? It's living by the word of God. It's living knowing that you have a responsibility to learn how to live your life effectively as a believer Every single day, applying the word of God. Let's go deeper. The man of ceasing causes you and I, as I said last time, to value godly principles. We must remember principles outlast passion. You see, a lot of people, they go, oh, I'm fired up about you and everything else. Amen. But you don't understand. You live your life by principles. And when you see these principles work, these principles keep your passion going. But if you're trying to live just by excitement and a thrill and a hyped up life, what's going to happen when you disobey these principles and don't see what you want to see because you're out of line with principles? See, tithing and giving offering these are principles for the Christian, for the believer to live by. Going to the house of God, not forsaking the assembling yourself together. These are principles for the believer to live by. Hallelujah. Loving your neighbor as yourself. These are principles for us to live by. Hallelujah. Count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations. These are principles for the believer to live by. You and I live our lives by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Hallelujah. We said that the manner ceasing or stopping causes you and I to take responsibility. This is very, very important. You and I, because we live our lives knowing that the manna cease. Uh, it's just like I told you about the stimulus check. Well, when people get the stimulus check, that's not something that's going to be ongoing, right? Yeah, you do know that. The government, it's not the government responsibility to take care of us. No, 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 no. 
The government responsibility is to help us govern life, to help life live through and by rules and regulations that are in line with living a responsible life. You see, because we are called as kingdom citizens, as men and women of God to take dominion in the earth. We're called to subdue the earth. We're called to live a life that's pleasing in the sight of God, making and putting God first. Y'all know Matthew 6, Matthew 6 and what? 33 says what? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. What things? The things that the Gentiles or the heathen are seeking. What are they seeking? What shall we eat? What shall we wear? Or what shall we put on? God said that stuff, all those things will be added to you when you put me first and put my principles first, when you take responsibility, when you strive after, when you aim at doing things my way, because the Bible says there's a way that seem it right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So we're talking about what? The manner ceasing and we're living our lives by ideas, skills, and strategies. All right, let's move further. <coughs> Excuse me. It's been said, most people don't lead their life, they accept their life. So you don't have to accept what is called mediocre. You don't have to accept lukewarmness. You don't have to accept being the bottom at the scraping the bottom of the barrel, living from paycheck to paycheck. That ain't how God wants you to live. Are there people that live like that? Absolutely. Are you going to be one of them? Absolutely not. Why? Because God's word tells me some things to do. God's word tells me that if a little sleep and a little folding of hands and I'll come to poverty, which means what? I got to get up out of my bed and go to work. I got to get up out of my bed and not be lazy. A slowful man, even what you bring to him, he is too lazy to cook it. A slowful man, according to the book of Proverbs, says, there's a lion in the street, so he can't go out. In other words, he is a person that makes excuses. So you and I are not called to be slowful. We're called to be diligent. The Bible says the hand of the diligent shall bear rule. So if you want the rule, you have to be diligent. Doing something with your time, doing something with your life, being a productive person. That's how we live. That's the way that God wants us to live. Remember, money follows service, render. What did I say? Money follows service, render. When the, when the company is paying you for what we call work, what are they paying you for? Your services that you render. And we're serving others through and by our work. <clears throat> yes. Let me move on away from that. Listen, the man of ceasing causes you and I to change. Remember, we change from glory to glory. So when the man of ceased, it caused them to have to even the more grow up and function like productive adults. You see, if you know that you can waste your time, waste your money, waste your talent, but somebody's always going to get you out. Somebody always going to help you out. Guess what that will do? It will keep you from changing. It will keep you from growing. It will cause you to never improve and value your time here on the earth. But when you understand that you ought to be changing from glory to glory, from strength to strength, from faith to faith. Guess what? That's 
why the manna ceases. Amen. Listen, if you could waste your time, waste your money, waste your energy, waste your resources, but know that your pastor or your local church is going to get you out. Guess what that would do? It would keep you immature. It would keep you from being a man of God or a woman of God. And it will make you a babe and keep you in a and in, in an immature state. Are you listening? The Bible said about Jesus as a child, he grew. He grew in statue and he grew in wisdom. That's Luke 2 and 52. It said that Jesus grew in statue and in wisdom and in favor with God and man. He grew. He grew. Physically and mentally in his wisdom, wisdom, another word for wisdom <clears throat> is skill. So we're talking about ideals, skills and strategies. All right. Now, let's go into these two little points here that we're going to give you tonight. Amen. And these are the two points that we're using as it relates to ideas, skills, and strategies, okay? All right. All right. What happens? How the, What happens when the manna cease? Amen? And we're going to move into the ideas and skills and strategies. Listen, we say it happens now. What happens when we get into the uh, promised land? It happens now through sowing and reaping. See? See, life for you now because you're in the promised land, because you're no longer depending on the manna to fall from the sky, you're going to live by what? Sowing and reaping or by seed time and harvest. We know Genesis 8 and 22 speaks of as long as the earth remains, they're going to be cold and they're going to be hot. They're going to be uh, seed time and harvest. So we understand that now over in the kingdom, knowing that we can't live every day depending on a miracle. Amen. Same thing we have to do with our bodies. We understand that we have to sow what we want to reap. What did I just say? You have to sow what you want to reap. You don't have to be surprised by what kind of harvest you get because you understand what kind of seed you've been sowing. If you've been sowing peace, Guess what you're going to get? Peace. Now, that don't mean somebody won't try to treat you nasty and bad, but you understand that's not part of your harvest. So you're looking for your harvest based on what you're sowing. You're not sowing to the flesh. You're sowing to the spirit. And the Bible says, he that sow it to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. See, you live according to you, what you're sowing. That's how we live in Canaan. Now, again, God, to get your finances straight, to even get your health straight. Sometimes when people have bad health, they can come and get in the prayer line and the power of God hit them. Boom. And their health, they're healed from the crown of the head to the sole of their feet. But that doesn't mean that they can go back, practice eating unhealthy, practice unhealthy lifestyle and keep a whole healed body. No, you understand sowing and reaping. I got to now to get my blood pressure straight, to keep my body from hurting and keep me out of the hospital. I now must eat the right thing. I now must exercise. I now must move because movement helps the body Movement of any kind, be it walking, be it running, whatever kind of movement you're doing is good for the body. So you and I now have to do what? We have to sow what we want to reap. Listen at Philippians 4, 15. Now we know in the book of Corinthians, Paul the Apostle taught uh, be uh, it tells us in, I mean, in Corinthians, it teaches us 
how important it is for us to be a hilarious or prompt to do it giver. God loves a what? Cheerful giver. And he's able to make all grace abound toward us that we will always have. Notice, oh, we were what? Always having an abundance of all things may abound to every good work. So when people lack, <clears throat> a lot of times it's because they haven't been sowing or else God told a lie. Because in Canaan, the manna is going to cease. As you approach Canaan, the manna will stop. But God has established sowing and reaping to be a way for us to be assured that we're going to have a continual harvest. That no pandemic, no economic downturn can stop you. You are being controlled by what you've been sowing. Now listen at Philippians 4.15. It says, now ye <clears throat> Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. Now in Philippians, this is the same church that Paul tells them that because of their giving to him, that my God will supply all their need according to his riches in glory. You see, when I served my pastor and I gave to my pastor, I entitled myself to have a harvest from God. When I sow to whoever God tells me to sow to and I be a good steward over what he has given me, my resources. Amen. When I sow into good ground, I'm going to get back a harvest. This is the way we live in Canaan. This is the way we grow and develop and have more in Canaan. Shout out to Prophetess Sylvia Anderson. Yolanda Johnson is watching. Wanda Brown is watching. Prophetess Mary Fleming is watching. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Patricia Burton is watching. Way to go, Sister Burton. Shout out to you and Charles Burton. Amen. And God's going to bless you for those good collars you blessed my wife and I with and that good barbecue that your husband fixed. Amen. It's off the chain. Legs Walston, shout out to you. Uh, Nikisha Hammond, shout out to you. Uh, Sister Linda Brentson, shout out to you, woman of God, a giver in the kingdom. Uh, Marcus Johnson, Mother Whitaker is watching. Way to go, Mom. Love you. Uh, Deacon Dennis, all right now. And Vernita Battle, amen. God's going to multiply you all for how you all sow and give. Shout out to Quanta Brown. All right, Monique. I call her Monique because I'm expecting that girl to have a lot of money. Uh, Vanika Sharp, shout out to you. Amen. I know you're going to have a lot. Your last name, Sharp. My daughter's watching. Amen. And shout out to the grandkids, Tatum, Adalyn, Adalyn, and Kaysen. Amen. They are participating in sports right now. Kaysen is playing soccer, and Tatum is playing baseball, and Adalyn is playing soccer. Amen. Shout out to Sister Demetrius. All right, another giver. Amen. God's going to bless you. Shout out to Rachel and Brianna. Ha <laughs> ha. All right. All right now. Amen. That's the Moses family. All right. Now let's go deeper here. Bishop Payne. Bishop Payne said this. Your seed will speak louder than your situation. This is important for you to catch. Your seed will speak louder than your situation. Hallelujah. See, remember Luke 6, 38, it says what? What does Luke 6 and 38 say? Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give into your bosom. That's how we live in Canaan. 
So we live by what? Ideas, skills, and strategies. Amen. So whenever I go to the house of God and it's offering time, I don't get sad. I get excited because this is the way that I live in Canaan. This is the way that I live because I'm no longer living in the wilderness. God brought me out of sin, brought me out of darkness and brought me through the wilderness into the promised land. So in the promised land, I'm to live differently and expect differently than the what I li how I lived and expected in the wilderness. Come on. Hallelujah. Right? Amen. You don't sit around in your house waiting for somebody to give you some food. Not now. Amen. You go, got your money in your pocket or your money in the bank, and you go and buy you some food. All these restaurants and stuff is here. Why? Because you are a giver. Just today I was talking to a man of God and uh, <clears throat> because of the many books that we read and he enjoyed them so much. He said, man of God, I just want to uh, spend some time with you just to get to know you better. He said, uh, I want to take you out to lunch. It's on me. The dinner is on me. Why? Now, listen, I didn't I don't live again based on what manna falling from the sky. Why is he doing that? Because he's reaped some of something from my sowing. What? He's gotten my books, read them, been blessed by them, been strengthened by them, been helped by them, been fortified by them. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So now he wants me to just go out with him. The meal is on him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, so I, I told him, I said, well, we'll just go to ribeyes somewhere. Amen. You understand? Amen. So I can go get what I want. Because why? I've sown. You poured into people. So you reap. That's the principle of this kingdom that we're in. It's governed by seed time and harvest. In other words, if you want people to be nice to you, be nice to somebody. Listen at what the book of Proverbs says. He that hath friends must show himself friendly. Notice what it did not say. He that hath a friend. You shouldn't just have one friend. I ain't got but one friend. You're telling on yourself. Amen. Because the Bible says he that hath friends. Yes. Friends must show himself friendly. Glory to God. If I take my phone right now and show you the, the list of all the apostles and all the prophets and all the pastors I got in my phone, it would amaze you. Amen. And these are not people that I call when I need something and text when I need something. My wife can tell you during holidays and everything, I text these people individually. I take my time and make sure that they know how valuable their friendship is to me. So I have friends. So when my literature and stuff comes out, I have no problem about letting them know. And they order them from everywhere and they're blessed by them. Why? We're friends. And they don't they haven't they don't read them. They, uh, they don't even they haven't read them yet, but they trust my writings. Enough to know that whatever I write is going to be in line with this word. It's going to be in line with the scriptures. Are you listening at me? Hallelujah. See, just like Saturday, I think this Saturday, the saints at Noons of Life will be sowing into my wife and our life because, amen, normally during the month of April, we will have what we call an appreciation banquet. But because of the pandemic, we're not able to do that. We're not doing that. Amen. And so they get a chance to sow. They're not, we're not forcing them to do it. We're not begging for anything. This is their opportunity. Watch what Paul said in the word in Philippians. He said, not that I desire a gift. I don't speak in respect to want. He said, for I've learned how to abound and to be abased. 
He said, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. In other words, he's saying when, I, when you give to me, God puts something on your account. Glory to God. And God begins to bless you because you're blessing me as a man of God. I'm sowing to you what? Spiritual things. You should give to me something natural. That's the way it works. Shout out to Brother Wade. Shout out to Tasha Battle. Way to go. Way to listen, Tasha. Amen. We need the word of God. Sister Patricia Body is watching. All right. Listen at me. I'm telling you, when you live like I'm talking about, you will have an effective life. All right. <clears throat> so your seed speaks louder than your situation. Remember that woman who was about to lose it all. She was about to die. Her son was going to die. But Elijah, God had been taking care of Elijah at the brook. God allowed the brook to dry up and the ravens to stop feeding him so that he could go and connect with this woman. And the Bible said, the woman said, wait a minute. Me and my son are getting ready to eat our last little bit and we're going to die. And Elijah said, go do what you said, but bake me the first cake. In other words, put first the kingdom of God. And when she did, guess what happened? Glory to God. She never lacked. She never lacked. That's why one of our 13 books, one of them is called Riding the Back of a Soul. And we talk about how to sow faithfully, how to sow willingly, how to sow joyfully. Because whatever you give, you should give it with great joy, knowing that God will provide. Hallelujah. All right. Now, let's deal with number two. So the first point is what? It happens through sowing and reaping. Now that you are in Canaan, now that you're no longer in the wilderness, again, see, God allowed the, <clears throat> the government, thank God, to be touched, their hearts to be touched with the feelings of people's hearts and minds that, hey, we need to give stimulus, stimulus checks. And I hope and pray that you use yours wisely. You didn't waste it. <clears throat> you didn't uh, squander it, but you use it effectively. You help pay off some bills or whatever. Or, amen, be a blessing to your pastor or the local church by being a tither out of it, tithe out of it, bless, and know that God got more. Because why? Again, that's not going to happen every, every month. It's not going to happen for you all the time. You got it? <clears throat> but at the same time, you understand that I have a guaranteed way to live. And the guaranteed way that I'm supposed to live is by sowing and reaping. Guess what? Let's, 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 let me use this example. If you own a natural job and you're going to work every day and you're supposed to get paid at the end of the week, or maybe you own a job to get paid every two weeks, or maybe you own a job to get paid every month. When your pay time come, if you've been working on that job every day, doing what you're supposed to, are you nervous about getting a check? No, you know, you got one coming. Why? You've been to work. You sown your life. You're not nervous. Ooh, are they going to pay me? Oh, I don't know how much. No, no, no. You know what you got coming in unless they give you a raise. Because why? You know how many hours you work. And you know you work every day. You know at the end of that week, they're going to give you a check. You know at the end of that two weeks, they're going to give you a check. You know at the end of that month, they're going to give you a check. Because if they don't give you a check, you're going to sue them. If they don't give you a check, you're going to raise sand at that company. You're going to make a man uh, uh, on some noise. Because why? You sold. You know you're going to reap. Well, it's the same way, amen, with life in general. God said, hey, because y'all out in the desert, I got to send manna from the sky to keep you. Because you're out in the desert and I led you this way. I got to let water gush out of the rock. But when you get over into this land, it's a good land. 
is flowing with milk and honey. Now the manna is going to stop. And now the only way you're going to be fed now is by what you plant in the ground. The only way you're going to be fed now is you get out there and feed those cows. If you get out there and raise that cat, raise those cattle, if you get out there and get your horses and your mules and y'all plow the fields and plant your seed, because now the way you're going to live is by the fruit of Canaan. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. By your ideas, by your skills and your strategies. Now, that leads me to number two. I got to go into number two. Because I got to get this one. The second way in Canaan that we live and the second way we live by ideas, skills and strategy is watch this one. This is a powerful one. Now, these are just two little points that if you get them, they will change your life. Because they'll stop making you live with, with a hand, expecting a handout and you will start looking for a hand up. You get what I'm saying? All right. Here's an example. You all remember that man at the gate called Beautiful? He was there asking for arms. But why did he need arms? He needed arms because why? He was lame. He couldn't work. He couldn't provide for himself. So because he could not work, he could not walk because he had been lame from his mother's womb. He had to ask for arms. Or Somebody to give to him because he was poor. And Peter and John looked at him and said, silver and gold have we none, such as we have give out unto thee. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. The, Peter grabbed him by the right hand, his ankle bone received strength, and he got up and walked. Now notice, did you ever read again in the book of Acts that he's there at the temple asking for alms? No. Guess what he did? He went out, started working, started providing for himself. And made it through life. And you never read again in the book of Acts where that man was asking for arms. What am I saying? You don't need a hand out. You need a hand up. Black people have never been asking for just a hand out. Oh, no. Black people wanted opportunity so we could get a hand up. Shout out to Sylvia Farm, Farm, Foreman, Sylvia Foreman. Uh, Bishop Ronald Wayne and Pastor Marjorie Sharp is watching tonight. A powerhouse church in Raleigh, North Carolina, doing a great work. I tell you, listen at him on every Wednesday at uh, 7 o'clock and every Sunday morning at 11.15. He come on at 11.15 on Facebook. I come on at 10.15 to 11.15. He come on at 11.15. All right, shout out to Aretha Deer. Shout out to Aretha Deer. Now, here's my second point. Here's the second one now. First one is what? You live by what? It happens through sowing and reaping or seed time and harvest. Sow seed, sow seed, and expect God to do some powerful things. Sow seed, expect God to multiply. The Bible says he multiplies the seed sown. What does God do? He multiplies the seed that we sow. So if I don't sow no seed, God has nothing to multiply. He multiplies what we sow. So if I want to reap bountifully, I got to sow bountifully. Because if I sow sparingly, I'm going to reap sparingly. If I want a little bit, all I got to do is sow a little bit. If I want a whole lot, I got to sow a whole lot. Now, number two, number two is great decisions. This number two is important. You live by Great decisions. Great decisions is how we live. We live our lives by what? Great decisions. See, every last one of us have made bad decisions before. The Bible said all have sinned, come short of the glory of God. What? All means everybody. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So all of us were born in sin, shaping in iniquity, but we made a decision, glory to God, to give our lives to Jesus. It was one of the greatest decisions we could make. But it doesn't stop with that one decision. You also have to make a decision 
to go to the house of God. You have to make a decision to join a good local church where you could be fed with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. You have to make a decision to go to Bible study. You have to make a decision to go to the house of God on Sunday morning. And now we're gathering together on Facebook Live. Life for you and I in Canaan is controlled by the decisions we make. I like what one man of God said years ago. Life is choice driven. You live or you die by the choices you make. Listen, great decision. This includes putting a budget in place. See, having a budget, that's a decision you make to live your life on a budget so you won't waste money, so you won't mess up money, so you won't throw away money, so you won't do like the Bible said that man did that asked for his goods from his father and went and got with harlots and wasted his money on riotous living, you see. Amen. Listen, it's been said, it's been said, listen at this, a great decision can never be made with poor information. You and I need great information so we can make great decisions. Come on, y'all. That, that was, oh, my God. Did you hear what I just told you? A great decision can never be made with poor information. You and I need great information so we can make great decisions. That's why the man or the woman of God must preach the word. We're preaching and teaching you the word not to control your life. Where well, they trying to control my life. Nobody trying to control your life. God never made man to be a robot. He told man, I'm going to set before you good and evil, life and death. Choose life. It's a decision that you and I make. So through and by us preaching and teaching the word of God, feeding you the word of God, word of God is what? Good information. And you make decisions off good information. If you're getting fed bad information, then you are going to make bad decisions. That's why you who are watching me and you are on the leadership team and you're there to help your leader always feed your leader good information. Because if you don't feed him good information and he make a bad decision, then that's your fault. You help him make that bad decision because you fed him bad information. Y'all know recently LeBron James made a statement on tweet through Twitter that he had to take off. Why? On Twitter, they had to take off. Why? Somebody gave him bad information. He didn't have enough information. Therefore, he made a bad statement that 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 to pull off. Now he's not a bad person. We know LeBron done a lot of good. Continue to do good things for the community and black people and all this. And he stands up, amen, for right. But when you're getting bad information, it's hard to make good decisions. So those elders who went to spy out the land, look at those Moses. God wasn't against him sending out 12 spies. The problem was 10 of them, 10 elders. These weren't just anybody. These were elders of the tribe. He sent out 10 elders, sent out 12 rather, but 10 of those 12 brought back bad information to their leader, Moses. Joshua and Caleb said, if the Lord did lie in us, we're more than able. Let us go up at once. But those 10 spies said, uh-uh. This is a good land, but it eat up the inhabitants thereof. And we're nothing but grasshoppers in their eyes and in our own eyes. We saw them. They are giants. And the Bible said, watch this, your Bible said that Moses got discouraged. What? The great leader, Moses, the meekest man, one of the meekest men that ever walked the earth. Moses got discouraged through what? His leadership team. 
His leadership team gave him bad information. And that bad information discouraged Moses and they did not go up. And the next day they get up. Oh, let's go up. Let's go up. And let's go get it. God said they can go up, but I'm not going to be among them. Why? Because those 10 leaders gave Moses bad information. Come on. Hallelujah. You that are part of that local ministry, give your leader good information. Make sure he has good information so he can make a good quality decision. We're trying to make decisions as to when we go back into the local assembly. Why? Because other people's lives are at stake. So we're trying to wait for some of the saints to get vaccinated. Because why? We're trying to make good decisions for them that not just get one shot, but both shots. We want them to be as safe as possible. We know ultimately if they get sick, we have to pray. We have to lay hands on them or speak the word over them. But let us not endanger their lives based on bad information. So now we're trying to make sure that the scientists and everything else is giving out good information. You got to wait this whole process through. Remember the Johnson and Johnson. They got that on pause now. Why? Because why? They got to get all the information together. People talking about, hey, let's rush it back. No, they better make sure that this vaccine isn't causing clots. People's lives are at stake. It may not be your mama, your sister, but it's somebody mama, it's somebody sister. And we need good information so we can make great decisions. And based on the information, people can decide whether or not they want the Johnson and Johnson or they want the Pfizer or do they want the Moderna. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Right now, we're probably trying to wait till June the 1st when the governor said we can go back in without the mask and everything else. That'll be great. Amen. But anyway, listen, listen at this. Listen at this. Yeah. Huh? What? Oh, yeah. Keep masks, but don't have to worry about social distancing. I'm sorry. Yeah, a mass number, we can go back in. Amen. Anyway, let me go on with this here. I got to go deeper here. Shout out to Leah Cameron, Jordan Sur Surgeon, oh, I, and Pastor Virginia Smith. All right, woman of God, glad to know you're watching. Don't forget, y'all got to get our latest three books. One called Death, I need to understand they got that one. And uh, Long Distance Runner, uh, Pastor Smith got that one. But my latest book, Let the Prophet Speak. Show us our way. Oh, my God. It's a great book. Amen. In fact, amen. We're about to teach some of these in uh, in a Bible institute. God has opened up all kinds of doors for us, man, because people are getting this information. They want it. Good information is important. Listen at this. Shout out to Elder Marvin White and Iris White. All right. They, they are part of our board team. They gather information together. See, we make decisions for the local church. Well, we can't do it if we ain't got the right information. Listen at this. Great leaders. Please write this statement down. Great leaders need accurate information. Again, Moses made a poor decision because of bad information from 10 of his elders. Hallelujah. Those elders, y'all have been saying like Joshua and Caleb. Let's go up. Let's take it. God is able to do it. God is able to bring it to pass. God can make it happen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I remember years ago, my brother who pastors a great church there, and he was believing God that they were going to move from, they was on, I think it was, what the, Martin Street? East Martin Street. East Martin Street. And, 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 and uh, be where they eventually was at. Amen. I'm talking about that little bitty building. Was that on? It was on East Martin Street, and they moved to another place. But before they did, one of his elders just doubted. See, you got, if you want to be an elder, you can't, you can't, you can't be doubting. You got to be believing in the vision. You got to be believing the report of the Lord. You got to believe that God spoke this to your man of God. And God going to bring it to pass. I'm not talking about some crazy leader that got some wild stuff. I'm talking about somebody who you know. Glory to God. See, my, see, listen, I was born and raised in Tarboro. Most of the people, a lot of them 
in East Harbor, they know me. I come from apartment 81 East Side Homes in the projects. Are you listening? So, so my daddy was Eddie Frank Sharp. My mama was Shirley Sharp. Amen. My sister and my brother and all of us. We, we lived in Tarboro. Patricia Body, one of our members, Sister Marilyn, some of these people grew up with me that I'm now pastoring. Amen. So they know that I'm not lying. They know that I lived in apartment 81 oh, East Side Homes. Oh, my God. Listen, Proverbs 12 and 15. Let me go to Proverbs 12 and 15. Listen at this. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes. But he that hearkeneth unto counsel that is wise. Unto counsel is wise. So you hearken to counsel. That's a wise thing. Good information. Good advice. So you can make what? Good decisions. Because over in Canaan, now that you're in Canaan, you're living by good decisions. This is a good time for you to buy that. This is a good time for you to purchase that. Now, a lot of people get mad when you give them good advice. But one of the things you need is good advice. Right. Amen. That's why even before people get married, you have marriage counseling. Why do you go through marriage counseling? So you can get some good advice so you can make good decisions as to whether or not this person is going to be the right person to spend the rest of your life with. That person may be. Amen. A person that you that based on the, the advice and the counseling, you said, no, 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 no. This this man don't love God. This man ain't even a tiger. This man ain't. Even, no, you don't want to do this, girl. Well, I, well, I've been engaged. I got the ring. Well, get the ring back. Why? Because based on this information, it's not a good thing. Well, I'll leave your church and go somewhere. Well, well, listen, listen, you don't want good information so you can make good, great decisions. You see, you need good information. Come on now. Why do you think, <clears throat> glory to God, hallelujah, the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers just resigned their coach to some extra years of coaching because they're going by his ability to make decisions because based on the time when they haven't had all their players playing, he's been able to still lead them to a good record. Coaches have to be what? Great decision makers. Oh, my, let me, let me read on. I got, I got to finish this out. Oh, my goodness. Am I going to finish this? No, I ain't going to be able to finish this. I'm going to have to come back next week. All right, let me read a little bit more, though. I got a little bit more I want to give to you. Oh, my goodness. Let me read this in the message translation. Proverbs 12 and 15 in the message translation. Fools are headstrong, oh, my God, and do what they like. Listen to what it says about fools. Remember the Bible said the way of a fool is right in his own eyes. Fools are headstrong and they do what they like. Wise people take advice. Wise people do what? Take advice. Why they need advice? Because they got to make a decision. Do you not know every day you're making a decision? You're making a decision to what? Get up on your bed to go to work. You're making a decision to what? To, to, to go here, to drive here. To do this, to do this. Life consists of you making decisions. And some of you are making decisions and you're not even noticing that just what you're doing. You're making a decision. How you're going to use your time. What you're going to do here. Everything. And I'm telling you something. Every leader has to be a good decision maker. If people are bad at making decisions, then they're not going to be good leaders. That's why the Bible said a leader is going to govern the house of God the way he governed his house. So if, if, if he's always getting put out of his natural house, always losing stuff, not lost his car, lost his house, lost this, losing, can't keep nothing, then what? He's going to make those same types of decisions when it comes to the house of God. He's not going to be effective. He don't need to be no pastor, don't need to be in charge. Because why? He's going to make bad decisions with the money. I was just talking to a man today. He was saying how that he, he, he had to go in and help a ministry because the pastor had ran off with over two hundred thousand dollars. That's a bad decision. See. Amen. That brother Shambach before he had died had helped build up this great ministry. Amen. In this particular city in North Carolina. And this man. Amen. Just but see, listen, 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 listen. 
Amen. If he had a board around him, he can't do such things like that. Because certain records and everything else are locked down. My wife and I can't steal from our ministry. Can't do it. Because the record keeping. We have people on uh, that deal with our finance committee. We have a board that we have to report to. Tell them how money is spent, what we get ready to buy next, what we get ready to do next. And we make these decisions that are wholesome, amen, for the house of God. Are you listening? Plus, I, I ain't going to jail. Oh, no, sir. I don't want to go to jail. I don't want to go to prison. And believe me, they will, just because you're a preacher, just because you're a pastor, that don't mean they won't send you to prison. They'll send you to prison quick over this money. Amen. Now, listen at me. Great decision. Here, write this down. Write this statement down. It's a hallelujah moment. It's a hallelujah moment for you. Great decisions can bring you out of debt. Thank you, Pastor Reese. You ought to put a hand clap by that yourself there. Listen at that. Write that down. Amen. I'm coming out of debt because of great decisions. Put that down by yourself. I'm coming out of debt. Because of great decisions. Yes, we all want a miracle. But suppose God don't give you one. How are you going to come out of that? By great decisions. I told y'all last week. When we built, when we bought those 1.4 acres of property. Man, I wanted God to just give us a miracle bang and the land be paid off. But it didn't happen like that. It took great decisions. Pastor Reese and I and Sister Iris and Elder White. And, and Prophetess Mary Fleming, the board making good decisions, the finance team counting the money, keeping accurate records. Amen. All of that. That's what helped us pay off it, pay off that thing. And we paid it off early. Then we bought one, uh, 11 acres of property, almost 12 acres of property in Tomboro. Oh, I want a miracle. Oh, I wanted God to just, whoa, come on, let somebody just come into church and give us a, 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 a $10 million check. Bang! I would have loved that to happen. Oh, I would have felt so. I would have spoken in tongues all over the place. But I told you the matter ceased. <laughs> it takes ideas, skills, and strategies. And we ended up paying it off, the 11 acres. And now we got to build a new sanctuary. Oh, my goodness. Oh, man, it's going to cost a lot of money to do it. And you know I want a miracle. Y'all know I want a miracle. Y'all know I want somebody just, just hear me teaching and preaching and say, Bishop Sharp, how much is it going to cost for you to build that new, new sanctuary? The Lord told me that whatever it takes, I'm ready to write the check out now. Oh, I speak in tongues. I run all over the place. How, my brother, amen, right there in Raleigh, they, they got the land paid off. Amen, right there on Capitol Boulevard. Don't you know he want a miracle? Don't you know he want somebody to just come in? I mean, we, we were talking to one millionaire that said, oh, if you, you, you have your prints and everything else drawn up, I'll, I'm going I'm to I'm 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 do this. Man, that guy didn't do nothing. Amen. Didn't do nothing for my brother or myself. Amen. Just a bunch of talk, you see. But wouldn't we have a love for him to have done it? Oh, yes. But if that doesn't happen, guess what we got to do? Just keep making some great decisions. Now, what are we help, trying to help you do? Make great decisions and get out of debt. So what? If you're out of debt, you can give more to the kingdom. And if you give more to the kingdom, then the kingdom project can get done. But if you don't have it and you don't get out of debt, come on, that's why you want to be a part of a ministry that got a vision. Because then God got to bless you so you can bless the kingdom. God wants you out of debt, not so you can just brag about your debt, so you can give more to the kingdom. Amen. Yes, he wants your car paid off. He wants your house paid off so you can give more to the kingdom so that you can help the kingdom of God advance. Great decisions can bring you out of debt. Now, here's a statement said by Bishop Van Sharp. I'm going to finish it with this. Bishop Van Sharp said that you don't have to have great money to win, but you must have great decisions to win. Did y'all hear what Bishop Van Irvin Sharp said? 
Y'all know him, don't you? <laughs> oh, you don't have to have great money to win, but you must have great decisions to win. You are several decisions away from being out of debt. You got to make some great decisions. You got to decide. I want to be free. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. People see our books. We have 13 of them. They go, oh, man, I, well, you know, I'm, I, let me let me buy one to help you. I don't know. You ain't helping me out, man. I'm trying to get good information to you. All our books are paid for. Our books are paid for. You, you ain't got to do nothing to help me out. We trying to help you out. Trying to get some good information to you. Because what you need is some good information so you can make some great decisions. Preaching the word ain't to make you feel good. Whoa, whoa, the preacher preached today. Whoa, oh my God, he preached today. Oh, hallelujah. Well, what did he preach about? Well, uh, let me see. Uh, uh, it was called, uh, what, what name that message? What name? See, 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 now how you going to make a great decision when you don't even remember what the man fed you? You remember, it would be like me eating a meal and don't remember what I ate. When you go to the doctor, what do you think the doctor asked? Why is the doctor asking you these questions? Because great questions lead to him making a great decision as to what's wrong with you. Oh, I'm getting way ahead of myself because I'm trying to tell you great questions are important. You ask great questions. I'm a, I'm a person. I will ask questions because questions lead to answers and answers lead to decisions that I have to make. You ask questions. I tell people when you go to the doctor, ask him questions. He asking you questions. He asking you these kind of questions. All right. Uh, you fill out these sheets of paper. You fill out these sheets of paper to find out what's, what's running in your family. He's trying to find out what's going on with your family history. Is this something going on with your family history? What kind of diseases are in your family history? And then he asking you what? When the last time you had a bowel movement? Oh. Oh, he asked you when the last time you used the bathroom. Why is he asking that? Because it's important for you to have bowel movements. It's important for you to use the bathroom every single day. A lot of people ain't paying no attention to it. When the last time they been in the bathroom? Come when the last time I been in the bathroom? Did I go to the bathroom today? Y'all be paying attention. I pay attention to going to the bathroom. My wife can tell you I, I'm, I, I pay attention. I pay attention to even the color. Of my stool. Oh, I know. Well, that man, you crazy to say that right here on Facebook Live. I'm saying it on Facebook Live because it's important. The color, the softness. Amen. You stuff doesn't be coming out of you all hard, caked up. Well, to come out of you smooth. Come on, y'all talk to me. Amen. Yeah, this is important. I pay attention to how many times I'm urinating. All this stuff, why? Because you got to deal with prostate cancer. You're dealing with colon cancer. All this stuff, you got to be fighting against all this stuff and you cannot make great decisions as to making sure you drink enough water because y'all know that uh, Fred Price's wife was attacked with cancer because she wasn't drinking water. You have to drink water. Amen. You got to drink water. You got to move because when you walk around and move and stuff, your bowels will move. Oh, my goodness. I, they ask women, when the last time you had a cycle? The doctor's trying to get these questions in because he's got to make a decision as to what's wrong with you. Then they draw blood. All of this is helping him in his decision making because he's trying to decide and see What's your problem? Well, that's what we do. We get in the face of God. God, speak to us. God, your people need help. God, your people need life. Oh, God, give us a word. And as we're reading and as we're meditating in the word, God, speak some out of the word that we need to feed you so that you can make a good decision with your life. That's why we try to tell saints. As a Christian, you can't be messing with unsaved men or unsaved women. We're not trying to teach you from liking a boy or liking a man or liking a, a girl. Amen. As long as they ain't the same sex. 
We, hey, we could care less. But, but because God's word says light and darkness don't have fellowship. What fellowship have light with darkness? Amen. With Christ and Belial, we're telling you that that won't be a good partnership. You're going to love God. You're going to want to read the word. You're going to want to go to the house of God. You're going to want to go grow, grow, uh, draw closer to God. You want to go to heaven when you die. This person don't even believe hell is real. Don't even believe in the church. Don't even believe in your man of God. Don't believe in your woman of God. Just believe that I'm out here. Oh, Lord. Let me read this. I'm finished. I must stop. I must stop. I can't give you all this. This is too much. It's too much. I got too much before me because I, I studied this to help you. I'm telling you, the manner ceased. You got to live by ideas, skills, and strategies. Hallelujah. The same way a lot of black men going to have to live in America and stuff. If you already know that the policeman may have a prejudice in his heart, then what? All cops are not bad cops. I'm not saying that. All policemen, we got some good policemen, black and white. Thank God for the police force. We need to be able to call 911 when situations break out. Thank God we got some good policemen and some good male and female cops. But at the same time, we recognize that, hey, we must cooperate with them and put our hands wherever they tell us to do and live to talk about it another day. We got to make sure that, hey, when we are arrested, be it we're in the right and they think we're in the wrong, there's a way that we must behave so that we won't be shot down and killed through their overzealousness. Amen. We don't want that to happen. My goodness, that young man, uh, the right, 20 years old, amen, killed because somebody, she said, taser, taser, and pulled out a gun instead of a taser? Come on now. Amen. And they said the taser is always on your weakest side, not your strongest side. And it's a whole different color and it's lighter in weight than your gun. And then they said there's a piece that you have to mash before you release the taser. And you did none of that. Come on now. Oh, my. And you've been on the force for these many years. You're training people. Well, I'm out of time. Thank you for watching tonight. I'm talking about. The manner cease living by ideas, skills, and strategies. Somebody said, man, you take a long time to teach it. I'm telling you, you have spent an hour, you spend two hours watching a movie that all it do is make you laugh and act silly. Gave you no information, no way to live, no way to guide and conduct yourself. I just spent maybe about an hour and 15 minutes to give you some ideas, some skills, and some strategies to win. You win through great decision making. The Lord spoke to me and I want to say this to you what he said. Whoever has your ear in this time is very, very important. Who are you listening to? Whose information is valuable to you? Because if your pastor, if your leader's information is not valuable to you. Then you're going to lose. When you're supposed to win. Oh my goodness. All right. All right. Let me say this to you. I'm going to be doing Zoom on tomorrow night at, at 8 o'clock. I'm going to be doing a Zoom program tomorrow at 8 o'clock uh, uh, for Apostle Mal Williams. Apostle Mal Williams is celebrating his anniversary. And because of the pandemic, we're not back in. He's not back into his facility. And yet he wants us to share. And I'm telling you, God has a powerful, powerful word to hear. I'm asking all of newness of life. If you can. Amen. Go to uh, your. OK. Go to Zoom ID. Zoom ID. OK. The Zoom. My wife got to tell me how to talk all this technology. OK. What I supposed to say. <laughs> the Zoom ID is 
416-316-9791. Again, the Zoom ID that you can watch us tomorrow night at 8 o'clock p.m. At 8 p.m. tomorrow night, the Zoom ID is 496 316 Nine seven nine one, and the password is U F A capital U capital F capital A tweet. I mean two o two one twenty twenty one. Okay, all right. That U F A stands for United Fellowship Assembly. That's the name of the church. I'm gonna be sharing some power. Oh God, ta 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 ba 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 kusha. I, I'm excited about this word. New to life, you that are leaders or you that come, everybody is born to be a leader. Listen, I want you to tune in and watch that tomorrow night at eight o'clock right here. Amen. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, not here, but on Zoom. All right. Again, Zoom ID 496-316-9791. And the password is UVA. Uh-uh. Yeah. I mean, U-F-A, password U-F-A, U-F-A, stands for United Fellowship Assembly 2021. And it's at the bottom of your screen if you're watching this on Facebook Live. Tomorrow night, 8 o'clock, going to be off the chain. All right. Thank you for watching us tonight. We're going to pick back up here next Thursday, and we're going to talk to you some more about great decisions. That's a part that is necessary for us to have and function with great skills, great ideas, and great strategy. Great ideas, skills, and strategies. All right. Now, if you are watching this and you're not saved, but you desire to be saved, call us at 252-563-5382. 252-563-5382. After we go off, I want to call you. I want to pray with you, sir. I want to pray with you, ma'am, because the best decision you can make in your life is a decision to be saved. You need to give your heart and soul to Jesus Christ. And I want to talk you, a, talk with you and pray with you and believe God to get you off to a good start. If you desire to be saved, 252-563-5382. Write that number down. Call that number after we go off. These messages can be viewed on Facebook, but also on YouTube. Amen. After we go off about 10 minutes, it'll be on YouTube. You can watch it again and again. Because God has some big plans for your life. We're in Canaan. We made it out of Egypt through the wilderness. And now the manna has ceased. But through ideas, skills, and strategies, we're going to be victorious in Canaan land. Hallelujah. All right. Right now, these times, right now, currently, every Tuesday night, 730. Every Thursday night, 7 o'clock. Every Sunday at 1015. What did I say? Every Tuesday, 730. Every Thursday, 7 o'clock, and every Sunday morning at 1015, you can be blessed by the word. Oh, my goodness. And this Sunday, whoa, good gracious almighty. I mean, we have been talking about, amen, the, the shout of the king is among us. We finished that off, but this Sunday, whoa, glory to God. God has another fresh word for us to bless us. There are several ways to give to NOLCC. Good ground. I told you, sowing and reaping. That's the way we work over here in the kingdom. And so if you would like to sow a seed, be a blessing to our ministry. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, 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 or if you would like to be a person that tithe because you need a place to tithe because you don't have a good local home right now, church home. Let me tell you, news of life is good ground. Let me tell you something. Write that check or money order to newness of life Christian center. P.O. Box 1462, Tarboro, North Carolina. The zip code is 27886. Again, Newness of Life Christian Center, P.O. Box 1462, Tarboro, North Carolina, 27886. Or you can do it this new high-tech way. Download the Gear Plus Church app. Download the Gear Plus Church app. Type in Newness of Life Christian Center or Two seven eight eight six, and you can be a blessing to newness of life. Again, it's going to pop up when you type in two seven eight eight six. Newness of life Christian Center going to pop up, and you can sow a seed. Be a blessing to our local ministry. 
We believe God to do great things. I told you, yes, we would like a miracle, but until then, we're going to be good stewards over what God provides and puts in our hands in the name of the Lord. Listen, if you would like to bless my wife and I personally through your cash app, go to your cash app, type in that dollar sign, hit that letter R and then type in the word determined, D-E-T-E-R-M-I-N-E-D. The dollar sign, hit the letter R and type in the word determined, D-E-T-E-R-M-I-N-E-D. Sow a seed of any size, amen, to my wife and I, and we will appreciate it. Again, amen, we are not speaking because we are in want. We're speaking because we desire fruit that may abound to your account. Thank you for all of you, all of you who have been sowing into our ministry every week since this pandemic. Newness of Life been meeting budget. We're moving forward. We're not moving backwards. We haven't gone backwards. We're going forward. We're pressing ahead. We're forging ahead. Thank you for everything you sown to our ministry. Way to go, Newness of Life. Way to go, tithers. Way to go, offering givers. Y'all been doing it. And you're doing it right, proving that you love God, proving that you love his kingdom. And I know God is smiling at us as we've been obedient to him. Amen. Again, if you would like to be a blessing to us, we would appreciate it. And we know God will multiply your life in a great way. Amen. Thank you in advance for those of you who are going to sow Saturday to our lives. Amen. For our appreciation time. Again, we would normally have a banquet during the month of April. In October, we always have appreciation service, but this past October, we didn't have anything like that. And April, this past April, we didn't have it. And we're not having it again this year because of this pandemic. But you get an opportunity, if you want to, to give to who and what has been a blessing to you. And God will bless your life. Also, if you like to order our books, get all 13 of them. Come on. 13 ain't a bad number. Unlucky 13. No, 13. Amen. Every number that is created is a blessed number. I don't know where that stuff come from. Talking about unlucky 13. Amen. All this bad luck stuff. No, we are blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when we go in and blessed when we go out. We've written 13 books. Amen. And the latest three are deaf, a need to understand. So many people need to understand about deaf now. Get this book. It'll bless your life. And Long Distance Runner, Running to Receive the Prize, a tremendous book, and Let the Prophet Speak. This is our latest one, Let the Prophet Speak, Show Us Our Way. This one is is a good price to be a blessing to you. Don't forget, we have one called Riding the Back of a Sewing. Since we've been talking about sewing, I think this will be a good book for you to have if you don't have it already. Get it. Let it be a blessing to you. Thank you for watching that. Also, amen, we have a wonderful CD. And thank God for some of you that have ordered this CD. Amen. You wanted it and we sent it out to you. It's called Determined. Amen. Pastor Reese has put together about 12 or 13 songs. I think it's 12. Amen. Songs up here to be a blessing to you. We're we're believing God. She's going to put these other ones out and we're going to be blessed by some more of her good music. Woo! Glory to God. Can't wait to go back in the local house. Amen. Let her sing and let the worship team sing and be and lift up their uh, voices, all of us, in the name of the Lord. Thank you for watching tonight. We love you so much. Yeah, noon to live. We try to give you a definite date. Again, we got to meet with our board and talk to them so we can finalize everything so we can know exactly when we want to go back in. Amen. The local building. We want to do it, but we want everybody again that's supposed to be vaccinated and looking for their vaccination, trying to get that second shot in there. Then they say after you get your second shot, you got to wait two weeks and all of that. Amen. We're trying to do things right. Somebody say, well, you ain't no man of faith. No, no, no. We're not a foolish man and we're not presumptuous. We believe in trying to help God's people stay safe. Over 500,000 people, over 500,000 people have lost their lives, amen, due to this pandemic. That's almost over half a million people. And not to mention how many have contracted it. Amen. There's 140-something million people worldwide. Can you imagine that? Amen. So it's a blessing we still hear. By the grace of God. Amen. 
And my wife and I, we've taken our first shot. Amen. And so, amen. Uh, and many of our uh, local uh, members have taken both shots. But we thank God for, amen. We still got to believe God. Either way, we still trust in God. Either way. Amen. But, amen, faith without works, the Bible said, is dead. Faith without corresponding action is dead. So if you talking about you got faith and don't put no corresponding action, don't wear no mask, don't practice social distancing, don't get them shots, then all you talking about is a bunch of foolishness. Amen. I don't have time to deal with that. I got to make great decisions. And I make a decision, glory to God, to get the shot. All right. Well, got to go. Until next time, you be blessed. Have a tremendous Thursday night, Sunday morning, 1015, right here on Facebook Live. Amen. Oh, don't forget, tomorrow night, 8 o'clock on Zoom, 8 o'clock on Zoom. The stuff is down there at the bottom of your screen. God bless you. Have a blessed night.